Today I'm going to show you how to make a creamy roasted winter squash soup and I'm doing it all in my new Simex glass cookware. I had an abundance of these winter squash that I grew in my garden and I've had them here since I harvest them in October and they're starting to get a little bit soft now so I want to make sure that I'm going to use them up so I'm going to make a creamy winter squash soup. Now what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take a squash and I'm just going to cut it in half and I'm going to reserve all the seeds uh, because I'm going to pick out the ones that are viable and how you tell if they're viable or not is they should be nice and full and fat. And I'm going to line my pans with the, uh, I'm going to line both the top and the bottom with the halves of the squash. I have my winter squash layered both in the top and the bottom of the Simex glass um, casserole oblong dish and I think this is going to be my go-to one piece that is going to be my favorite. So what I'm going to do is just pour a little water in the bottom of each. The halves of winter squash are put placed in upside down. Go. And I'm going to pop them in the oven on 350 degrees for about a half an hour and then I'll show you what I'm going to do next. Never throw your seeds out from a squash. You can actually roast them in the oven and just even leave all the little pieces of flesh on because that caramelizes onto them. Just pop uh, a little bit of salt, Celtic salt on it and throw them on a roasting pan in the oven. You could uh, put it in alongside your squash while they're roasting if you wanted. Or what I do is you can keep them for growing in your garden. You can also keep them for feeding to your pets because they're a natural dewormer. But how you tell which seeds are going to be viable and which ones are not. When you pick up a seed, see how this one is really thin and it's papery and you can almost see the light through it that is not a viable seed that will not grow anything in your garden this seed is nice and fat and plump very much unlike that seed so this one is not viable and this one is a nice fat viable seed so all you have to do is just give them a quick rinse off lay them out in a single layer over a paper towel and let them dry and then you can grow squash in your garden and if you're not a gardener and you, you're not a farmer and you don't think you can grow them, just grow them in a flower bed. They have these big beautiful leaves and they are a nice backdrop to your flowers and you can just grow a couple of squash. They're, they're a big plants so they need a lot of space. But if you can put it as a centerpiece or a backdrop in your flower bed, you can have your own squash. And every squash that you purchase has a ton of seeds. So don't waste those seeds, either eat them, feed them to your pets, or save them for growing in your own garden. Even if you have a big barrel, you can certainly grow yourself a beautiful organic squash plant. And here's my seeds, just drying on a paper towel in a sunny window. And here's Comey, enjoying his extra squash pieces and the leftover seeds. Okay, now that they are all roasted and they're cool enough for me to touch, most of the time you can actually just pull the peel right off of them. So I'm just going to pull the peel off of them here. There we go. You want to scoop all the squash out. I have different varieties of squash here. So scoop them out of the skins. And don't throw away the skins either. Feed them to your pets or you can put them in the compost. So I have all my roasted squash taken out into a container. And here I have one clove of garlic sliced, two stalks of celery, and one half a small onion. I'm going to add two tablespoons of grass-fed butter. Okay, and to that, I'm going to add the onions and garlic and celery. I'm just 
saute that. Okay, now that it's starting to soften, I'm going to add in some water. I'm just going to let that simmer there. Now I'm going to dump in my squash. Dump that right into the pot. All the different colors of squash. Now to that I'm going to add a little bit of nutmeg. And I have a nutmeg grinder and a little organic nutmeg kernel from Mount Rose Herbs. Celtic salt. And now I'm going to take that. If I had a stainless steel immersion blender, I would just use that in the pot, but I'm going to take that over to my blender and blend it up. I add my soup into the glass blender. So I just put my soup into the glass blender. I'm doing half at a time because my blender's not quite big enough. If you have an immersion blender, just use an immersion blender in your pot and you'll cream it up in no time. Okay, now that it's all creamed up, it's nice and thick, pour it back into the pot, and I'm going to do the second half and then return it back to the stove. Here we have our finished winter squash soup, and this is a basic soup. At this point, you can add a little cream if you like, or you can just have it like it is. You can add some coconut milk or um, even some curry or flavor it whatever way you like. But this is a nice, basic, warm, hearty soup. So all I have to do now is put my lid on top and bring it over to my trivet to place on the table where I'll serve it from that. And then I'll put the lid on for the refrigerator and we'll reheat it tomorrow for some more. Okay, so here it is, ready to serve at the table. I have to say, I really do love this pot and these handles do not get hot. You can carry it over to the table, no problem. Have it on its little trivet here, and the soup is ready to serve. So I hope you enjoyed this recipe, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thanks for watching. Okay, so we're finished supper now, and I'm just going to put the lid on and pop this in the fridge, and then we'll reheat it tomorrow for some lunch.